all right guys so um welcome to bluetech empire python tutorials um this video we are going to continue from where we ended in the previous video if you haven't watched the video on lists which is the part one i will um, advise you to watch it before watching this one because from this one we are going to be continuing exactly from where we ended in the previous video on lists you can see the previous video at the top right hand side of this um, right now on the screen of youtube so um if you haven't watched it, I'll advise you to watch it. Um, video eight, this vi this video nine, so that's video eight. So if you can watch video eight, I think um, it'd be cool to follow up with this. But if you know about the list already, you can also follow up on this video. So let's go directly to the video. Um, now I want you to um, look where we ended. We actually ended with um, this, and like we we're saying. Um, here we have a list John, Mark, Ibrahim, Joe, two, four, false. And we're seeing these two, one, two, three, four, five. We printed list one, list two. I told you when you use the print statement separated by comma, it actually prints the items separated with the space. So you can see here we had this one printed out, followed by list two. So yeah, we have print then list one and then list two. It prints seven, comma, five. I told you len is an inbuilt function you can use for all iterables like strings, lists. I think you can use it for dictionary, tuples, and other iterables. So now we have len of list one. It had seven items one, two, three, four, five, six, seven with six indexes zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. List two has five items with four indexes zero, one, two, three, four. So you will say print list one index two. We are talking about the third item because we have zero, one, two, which is Ibrahim. We said print list one index zero. We are talking about the first item. If we said print list one negative, I told you with iterables like strings and lists, the last item is negative one, the last item but one, the second to the last item is negative two. And the last bit three items is negative three right up to the first item which in this case is negative one negative negative three negative seven so when you say negative one you are actually talking about the last item so for list two when we say negative one we are talking about five so it displays five when we say negative three we are talking about the third to the last item which is one two three so we have three now we have um negative one negative two negative three we said list two this one all right this one negative three should be one two three so it should return two now we have list one we use the slice operator i told you when you use the slide operator you can pass two values you know we have and each value is separated by the colon so we say start from index one remember index starts from zero and we say end at index six which means in the six is not part of the string the list i mean returned at this end index doesn't you try to tell okay start from one two three once you reach at six end so it doesn't return the index at the sixth position it ends at the sixth position so here we have zero, one two three four five we said n at six so it returns only from here right to here so as you can see we have um john um which is um here we have mark the first index one you see no normally starts from index zero so we have mark index one we have ibrahim we have um the next one is um joe and we have two four so print this one we told you when you omit the items for example here the first item was omitted we are trying to tell it to start from the beginning when you omit the second item we are trying to tell it to end at the end when you say now you said we want um steps of two so it starts from the first item john it skips one because we said it should skip that she should move by steps of two so it skips one goes to ibrahim skips one go to two skips one go to false so we have john and it returns the list remember it doesn't modify this list it only returns the sliced 
list. So we have now this 3 equals to this 1 plus this 2 plus this 3. Here we are using the concatenation operator. The plus plus sign here is for concatenation. It adds or appending. We adding strings to we adding lists together. So we are concatenating or we are appending lists together. So we appended this 1 to this 2 to this 3. And when we, and we assign the result of this operation to or expression to a list called list 3. So you see here we have list 3. Now we can see list 3 is made up of list 1, which is John, Mark, Ibrahim, Joe, right up to force. It's made up of plus list 2, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus list 3, which was, let's see, plus list 3, no, plus list 1 again, which is John, Mark, Ibrahim, Joe, 2. So you see it retains all the lists, even if they are duplicates, it just appends everything together. Now we have the repetition operator, multiplication sign here for lists and strings are, are called the repetition operator. So we see here it's multiply list 2 by 3. It's like adding list 3 by list 2 plus list 2 plus list 2. Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are three instances of list 2. We also saw you can change the item in a particular index. For example, the item at index 1 is map. Here we change it to new name 1. The item at index 6 is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is false. We change it to true. The item at index 4 is this 4. We assign a new variable. We use what we call equal to sign, which, like we explained in the video on introduction to Python, I think 1, 2, we said this is the assignment operator. So you are assigning the new string. Um, new name one to the first index. Here yeah, you are assigning the new string. I mean to this to index one. Here yeah, you are assigning the new boolean object true to the index six. Here yeah, you are assigning the new um, float object twenty point ten to index four. When you print it, you see index four has changed. Remember, this actually modifies the list in place, which means it doesn't return a new list. With the modified versions like we we're doing when we did, we did slicing it actually modifies the list in place so this statement here actually modifies this list in place which means because lists are mutable their values can be changed unlike strings you can change the value of string so as you see here we have list one four equals to 20.10 now when we print list one we see the value at index 1 has been changed, the value at index 6 has been changed, and the value at index 4 has been changed. But with strings, if you attempt to do that, for example, we have a string blue twitch empire. Now we had to change the value at W, which should be E. We wanted to correct our string like good people, but Python told us it isn't possible. There's a way to do that, and I'm going to show you right now. So for example, if we have a string, see um let's say we have a string let's clear up this um we use exit to exit python and we say cls to clear our window and then we get back into python we have a clear book so now let's say we have a text txt equals to um blue tech empire we can simply use our important knowledge you know we had blue twitch empire we can use our important knowledge on strings to correct this but we know we can't modify the string in place so we are going to create the new string and the new string should be a slice of txt from 0 to 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and um, let's say from 0 to you can use the function from 0 to index of maybe this but let's just be good people and let's make it simple so we're going to take from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 yeah, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we're going to say 6 so that it should end at T. So we want to take it from 0 to 6. And we're going to add plus the string E. Correcting it. And now we're going to pick, instead of picking from 6, we're going to start picking from 7. So we're going to pick now T, X, T, 7 right up to the end so here is a method which, which you can use if you print t x t 2 
you see it's corrected so we just extracted we sliced from 0 to t to this now we added e to appended e to what we had then now we we now extracted from here now to here so you see tech empire so we actually corrected our string but we can't change it we can just say text one for example we can change it like this text one and say we are so wise zero one two zero one two three four five six we can say text one six equals to you know this is a very easy method but python can't leave us because strings are immutable you can change the structure or you can change their value in memory you can change the object or whatever so it's a string does not support item assignment it's just a complex way of telling us strings are or a simple way of telling us strings are immutable so now let's move to the next stuff you know we are on list we see are you as you can see we use the concatenation operator to form a list list one list two list three yeah and um, as you can see towards the end of the script you can change the value of an item in a list by using the assignment operator equal to and in the, the index operator this like we saw we can stay with list you cannot with list this is possible for example if you have l equals to two and five four ah with list you can simply say l zero to set, change the first item equals to even something like maybe even um true oh oh so if you print l well we can even change l to something like a list another list or let's say triple in this case five six oh, so print l else change so you see it modify l in place it did not return any new list modified l in place to show l is actually new that's a list is actually mutable you can change its value so let's move on to something better um so this year so we explained earlier that actually lists are not really um lists are not really um immutable in a sense for example if you haven't watched the video on mutability immutability or the garbage collector you may not understand what i'm about to explain right now so you can go on and watch it for example we have a list one two three four here is what happens the first item is actually an immutable integer the second item is actually an immutable integer two the third item is actually an immutable item string item three the fourth the third item is an immutable it's a mutable list which points to an immutable item um, which has two items one and four that's an immutable one and an immutable four that's integer the fourth item is an immutable high and the fifth item is an immutable 2.5 which is a float here is a string now if you see this 2 equals to 20.5 python doesn't come to example 0 1 2 this 20.5 and change this value in the object python will point python consider this l list 1 0 to be a variable name this 2 list 1 1 to be a variable name and all this up to this 1 5 according to python is a variable name so python is going to say all right this object is immutable so what i'm going to do is if you assign me a new value like um, let's say you say list sorry i wanted to write here here is supposed to be one not two so in this case if we say list one is equal to 20.5 python is going to say all right this um l l list list one one is a variable name instead of pointing it to two i'm going to create a new object 20.5 and now point it to that 20.5 see what python does python is quite smart now you see it's because python can't change its value which means internally in the list it also has immutable and immutable structure because this each index of a list is immutable it, you can change actually really change the value there when you change the value what happens is python points that index to a different value and these two will be garbage collected if you say list one three equals to hello zero one two three equals to hello python was pointing to a list before it's just going to det um, detach list one three variable name from that list because it's actually immutable in internally it's going to point it to because this variable is this list was immutable internally 
so python is going to point it to the a new object called this one so as you see this is not being pointed to by any of the index again and this is not being pointed to so it's going to be garbage collected we can prove that we are going to find the address of this when initially and we are going to find the address of this initially after changing assigning new values to it we are going to find the addresses to see whether they still point to the same memory address if they don't point to the same memory address it indicates python has changed the, the memory address because it created a new variable let's prove that to see that lists are not actually imitable so let's see um, so let's try that out so let's say um, let's say this one equal to um let's check that one two three one four i 2.5 all right so it's one two T H R E D one two T H R E D and it has a list one four and it has um high that's high high and it has lastly it has two point five which is a float so two point five which is a float now let's say we have um let's say List two. Let's check the position of list one two. All right, or list one one. List. Okay, that was list two. So let's check the position of list two one. We are trying to check the address of this variable because I told you indexes like list two zero, list two zero, list list two one, and all that right up to the end are all considered to be like variable names. So we can find their location. So let's first print out this one. And let's print out this list two three list two three okay we see this list two one and this list two three all right let's find the the address those variables point to list two one let's find the address oh all right let's see where list two two list two three points to all right now let's change those um variables and check the address again so list two one let's change it to 20.5 let's change list two three to something like and we said we change it to hello let's check to see if our list has actually changed list two all right it changed as you can see it's been changed from two to 20.5 and it's been changed here from um, 1.4 to hello now let's check if the address of this one again like we did before address of this one as you can see the address have changed from this to this which means python actually created a new object and pointed list 2 to that new object 20.5 and let's check the value of this 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 2 3 again Oh, it's changed. It's no longer this, which means Python actually created a new object and pointed list two, three, a variable name to that new object. So internally, lists are still immutable to an extent. Yeah. So if you watch the video on immutability and mutability, you also understand what I'm saying. So let's move to the next step um, for lists. Um, the next step. As you can see from the image, when you assign a new value to an element at a particular index, the value is not changed in place. Rather, a new object is created with a value and the index reference points to the new value. So technically, behind the scene, objects in a list are immutable. But a list itself always remains immutable, um, mutable because the list, for example, list 2, id, list this two always be the same even if you change for example even if we change let me say this to welcome even though this two has changed now like it's now welcome instead of hello if you check id list two it still gives you the same memory address so a list will always point to the same memory address which means you even if you change these items it's still at the same location that's why we say generally a list is mutable 
because it, it maintains its address and you can change the values within it but internally the indexes of a list are immutable it means they point to different locations one as you change their values so and i just wanted you to take note of that so let's see an example of this long stuff yeah now, so now we have items equals to one four six and some long stuff and we have items equals welcome to python program now we print len items the number of item the number of items in items sorry we had to use items too it should be 10 so we have 10 starting from index 0 to index 9 now we in len items 2 the number of um, items in the list item 2 is 4 which means we have from index 0 to index 3 0 1 2 3 now print item 1 item 2 you saw it printed it printed it wow we already know this now we said print item 8 item 2 you see it printed the item items at 8 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so it we should be hello and um, item said and it prints now I comma that's separation when you use comma there's a space then item two zero so it prints welcome to programming so you have hi hello welcome to python programming now we said print item nine plus space you see it went to item nine items nine is zero one two three four five six seven eight nine and um, then we say plus space plus so items nine plus space set is blue tech empire that's the, the ninth index is is the last one blue tech empire then we say plus space so it has a, a space we concatenate it with the space and then we concatenate it or we append it to item two zero so it said blue tech empire welcome to python programming here is it now we said extract from the first in the from index one to index ten but skip that's so it's going to extract from it's going to return index items from index one right up to nine because we, as we said the last index is not always included in the extracted or the um, sliced string so we have and skip three for each skip every three items so we have one one two three we are going to eight so we can see it starts from four one two three it goes to zero one two three it goes to one if we take one two there's no item because it ends here so we have um zero um four zero one now um assignments you can say string equals welcome string two the second you see string behave like this you can also get items in particular index so zero one two is l if it attempt if you say items three equals to d the items is a list you remember you can change the item for example zero one 0, 1, 2, 3. We change this item to D strings. But if you try to add them, um, assign, if you try to change because it's mutable, but if you try to change the a, a character within a string, for example, trying to change the third uh, the character at the third index, we are trying to save change C to D, it failed because strings are immutable. Now if you say items one equals added and items five equals added two. When we print we saw we have changed item items the first index of I, the index one of items to added here is index one it was four we change it to added and then we change index five zero one two three four five it was two we change it to added two so when you print you see change added added two so now we extract from item the first item to the fifth item now what we did is that we we sliced and replaced that's something which is possible with this. I'm going to be showing you that now so you understand properly. Now, all right, so let's say you have a list, this one, this one, this one equals to two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. 20. yeah now remember you can also use what they call we are going to learn the range and um, function later but i can also create this type of list from just writing for example list two equals to you can use range i can convert it first to a list and then use the range function 
to say start from two end at and uh, let me say 40 and have intervals of two or step by two and it's also um correct let me see all right sorry it's range it's not range like this like it should be range like this okay it should be comma sorry i forgot okay all right let's look at this two you see it generated us from 2 to 38 we want it to be 40 we just need to tell it to enter 41 yeah, so it's going to give us what we want all right so we have now list 2 equals to 2 4 6 8 i just want to make you to know you can it's similar to the index operator what you do here is similar to what you do in the index operator you just create a range of values starting from 2 right up to 40 so just follow your knowledge on the index operator and you can create any kind of value you can even create value starting from a negative point like you can say list 3 list 3 equals to this 3 equals to um you can start from you can start from let's say 0 let's start from negative we want to go backward so let's say let's start from let's say negative 20 and we want to end at um let's say we want to end at negative 1 which will normally be negative 2 so and we want to go one two spaces backward yeah, something like this Let's even do 40. 40. But remember, if you use 2, it means it's going to attempt to go forward. So, what you do is you use negative 1 to make it to go backward. So, L3. All right. Let's see. Nothing, not, nothing happened. So, let's see. Ne okay, negative 1. Let's try this. Negative 1. All right. It's negative 1 to negative 40. Sorry negative 40 yeah so negative one go backward to negative 40 i think this is good all right so you see it started from negative one and if you want it in part in parts of two we can change this to two so we should actually do better stuff all right negative one negative three if we want even numbers we can say start from negative two to negative 41 so you see l3 all right, so negative two, negative or to negative forty-one. So let's look at L two, two, four, six. And now let's see what we can do. Now we can. You already know we can replace items, but let's see we can extract items and replace them. Let's see something. If you write L two, we can see we want to extract from the zero index to the um to the. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's say to the fourth index. Let's use 5. And we want to replace it with um since we are, we are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to take 0, 1. It's going to take this 5 item. So let's replace it with 3, 5, 7. With another list, 3, 5, 7, and 3, 5, 7. Three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Then let's see L two. All right. So you see, we have replaced um slice and replace. We slice and replace the first five items with new items we provided in a list. So you can slice and replace. You understand? You can slice and we replace so you can do that for any index i don't want to go into much um, details because it's the same thing you can do that to replace this the first let's say seven instead of say do we can say 11 we can add um 13 and we can add 15. Okay, you can replace it with anything we can even put false here just to show you it's not just numbers it must not replace a number with a number okay and you can even add extra stuff here you can even add more stuff it must not be the exact number you replace let's see let's even add a triple five five so let's see l2 so you see 
the slides and replace we replaced the first six items with eight items so as you can see we replace the first six items. so it's a longer list now we have we replace the first six items with eight items zero one two one two three four five six seven eight with eight items here are the eight items and you can even replace with fewer items you can replace with fewer items you see it's going to make the list shorter so let's see here too you see we have replaced it with fewer items so the list now is shorter so or we can even wipe those items the best way to wipe those items is to replace it with an empty list so okay you write there to now you see we have removed those items because we replace those items with nothing or you can even add items by replacing let's say the first seven let's say replace the first item by using zero zero with new items one two three four five six seven let's see l2 you see we have replaced by using this trick zero zero or you can still use this type of trick if you don't want to say zero zero you, you can leave it empty i think but if you leave it empty it's going to the end so the best way to use is zero 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 if you do like this what happened you saw what happened we replace the the, the in the zero item with one two three it had 22 so it, it just it just added items to the front of the list do you, you see the trick added items to the front of the list you understand how can we add items to the back of the list we can start from the end from the end and say maybe negative one negative one and then we say to the end and from negative one to the end we can add items let's see here too so you see we added items even though we did not start from the end then we added items from at least the end plus one to um the end so you can use all these tricks to extract and compress and remove items like i've done so those are the best ways you can use for slicing you can slice to delete you can slice to add you can slice to replace just like i've shown you here so let's slice again to remove let's slice to remove the first seven items yeah let's slice to remove the last seven items by saying negative one let's say negative one the last seven items and um, what we are going to use is that we are also going to use we are going to replace it with the last item so it's going to just replace only the last seven items you see what you see the trick i'm using now i'll take now the next so i'll replace it with only the last item which will cause it to you cut l2 now so you see i've replaced the last item with from negative one to the end i replaced it with um the last item so you get so i've cancelled some items so these are just some tricks let's see did this even work l2 let me do that again let me try to replace l2 negative one to a certain point all right i wanted to replace the last now let me replace the last seven items or the last six items so i'll start from negative six and i want to replace the last six items with nothing all right so l2 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 all right you see i've replaced the last six item zero one two three four five six one two three four five six so there is it you can do that so i just now you can understand this when we said um item zero five equals to new text one so we replace the first five items that's zero to four we replaced it with new item one so you see new item one new item two up to write up the new item five before the remaining part of it now item 0 0.5 we just replaced it with a single item it means we cancel most of the stuff so now see what we did in 
with string is i think 0 0.5 equals to replacement if you replace it with a string this string is converted to a list i just wanted to see for example let's see l2 for example if we have l2 look at it now if we say l2 we replace the first three items or the first four items 0 4 equals to Hey, hello, and let's say good. What is going to happen is that um, this is going to be converted to a, a list, like a list with four items. So the first item is going to go here, the second will go here, the third will go here, and the fourth will go here. So you see now, if you write L2, you see good. Then now 30 and the stop order and this other stops come. But you can also replace the first four items. With just a single string so it's going to cancel the first four and use only g so we are this is going to be gone if you check see gone so we have now only this so you can do all this complicated stuff is this is limited by your imagination so you see here we replace the first at the first five or four at five items with single you see and we had single yeah you see this is just a list it's different this is a list so you see for example we can replace the first four items with a uh, single so i just wanted to show you that mm. so we can replace we can replace this with um, like a list of g o o d take note this is just one item because it's a list this is not a string so the first item, if we had multiple items, we'll be replacing in order. But since we have just one item, the list is just going to replace the G. As you see, it's going to replace the first four items only with G. So you just have you see now L2 to so really made our list small from where we begun. So as you can see, here are here the stuff. So here, we just have single. So I just wanted to understand that. And let's continue to where we have to go. Consider the list below. At the bottom of the script, you can see list 04. You see, this is 04. We replaced it with this. Consider the list below. List 16 equals to replace the first six items with just two, one, three items. So, with the true, replace items at this one, two, this thing with 2.5, true, and three respectively, and returns the list one, two. So, remember that the list is not modified in place. When you use the slice operator, you actually return a new list with your your expected result. So there we go. And as you can see, you have um, list one five equals to come replaces items index one two three with. Um, you see now when you use a string, actually the first item will go here, the second will go here, the third will go here, and the fourth will go here. So you have C O M, then four ten. So you see you have, but we started from the first. So it's not index zero it's starting from two so you see one then we have com and we have ten so as you can see that's what we have index operator so now um we have a few methods in this we can check for example let's check our method in this by using either help you can use help list you see the methods we are going to learn that when we learn strings or you can so here are some methods in this extend index and all those stuff we are not going to learn all we're going to keep that for later press cure to quit and let's see let's use the list for a simpler way all right so let's look at some let's look at the list dot append method add items let's say we have an empty list we can append to it list i dot append append one let's see l yes we can l dot append and append t h r E E E S C L. Okay, we can see L dot append. We can even append another list. S C L. And we can even L dot append. We can append a string and um, whatever we want. True. Whatever we want. L. All right. So we can even see L dot um, we can use now we can use another method called I think let's see um, 
extend l dot extend by providing another list instead of adding one and um, fewer items you can use l dot extend to add a list of items for example one eight eight point nine and um, you have a tuple one two two and ah, already we are done so we can extend the list SCL, so you see we added multiple items at once so that's the use of the extend method and now let's see we can say um, counts we can count how many ones are in the list we can say l dot count we saw that when we learned string we can check how many let's say how many ones are in the list i think we have two we have three one two all right so it counts recursively is it one two three all right it counts all the lists Wow, it counts all the items in the list recursively. If it sees another list within the list, it also counts that. But note, it does not count the item in the triple. It counts recursively. So it counts one, one. It sees another list, enters and counts that one in it. So let's count how many fives are in the list. I'm sure we're going to see one. All right, we have... Um, okay, it returned... Um, sorry. It returned... Um, one three one because it actually counted true as one yeah true is equivalent to one internally in python so that was the reason why we had three it did not do it recursively yeah just to clarify that so true is equivalent to one and false is equivalent to zero yeah just so you know all right so um we can use remove to remove an item at a particular index for example let's remove zero one let's remove this list it's at zero one two it's at index two L dot remove to let's see. All right, X is not in the, X is not in the list. X not in list. Is there okay? Remove um we must specify what we want to remove. Let's remove it. Sorry, sorry. It yes, we remove it. There's no it in the list again. Let's remove one. It's going to remove the first one it finds, not all the ones. So it's going to remove the first one, this one. Let's see. Yeah, this one is still there. If we say L dot remove one again now, it's going to remove this one. Now let's um look at the last. Let's look at the few other methods. Extend, count, copy, remove, reverse. Of course, we know reverse. If we say L dot reverse, it is going to reverse the items here. So you see, it reverses the items, and um. I think L dot sort is going to sort the items either in alphabetical order or not. So um, we're gonna look at yes, pop is one of is a good one. Pop removes the last item. So if you say L dot pop, it removes three. You write L again. It returns the last item, but also remove it. If you write L dot pop, it's going to remove the list one five. But if we press L, you see it does not have that again. So and the last one is insert you can insert an item at a particular index for example the first item is one two you can insert we want the second item to be example hello you can insert something here by using index one because this is the item at index zero you want to insert an item here we can say l dot insert insert at index one insert the string t h r e we are going to learn all this so let's see l you see it insert three so now 0, 1, 2, 3. At index 3, let's insert false. So at index 3, let's insert false. False. So let's look at here. Yeah, you see at index 3. So it shifted this one behind, but it inserted something at index 3. So this one will be now index 4, 5. So I just wanted to show you that this has a few methods you can check out if you're interested. Just by typing G. If you want to know how to use them, you can type help and lists. Yeah, but we're going to look at all of them. But I just wanted to see. If you want to use them, you can type help, please. You see them here index, insert, pop, remove. You can remove an item at a particular, like sort and the rest. So there is it. So I am this is the end of this video. And in the next video, we are going to look at some examples using strings and lists. And following the follow-up video after that. We are going to look at Python. Um, we are going to look at tuples in Python. 
which are quite similar to this but tuples are like strings in that they are immutable you can change their values all right thank you and see you in the next video all right have a nice time